Hello, welcome to Ian HRP on YouTube and welcome to today's video where we will be talking about this, which you can hopefully just see. This is the Olympus 100 to 400. I'm at Donington Park on a very quiet morning, but not for long, the motorbikes will be out soon. So hello, welcome to Ian HRP on YouTube and welcome to today's video at Donington Park on a very quiet Sunday morning where I'll be doing a real world review test of the Olympus 100-400mm lens, a brand new lens uh, aimed at semi-professional professional, it's not the pro lens, it is weather sealed um, and this is what I bought the lens for with the intention of shooting motorsport mainly. So it is very early morning, there is very few people around today, I'm here for some motorbike racing. Um, so let's go back to me in the studio to tell you a little bit more about the lens. Don't forget to click and subscribe and like and share this video, it really is appreciated. Um, the subscription numbers are going up, viewing numbers are going up, so thank you very much to the people that are watching. Um, and yeah, why not subscribe to the channel? All it does is a click, click on the notifications and you'll get notified every time I release a new video. So yes, thank you me, I am back in the studio and um, I have my Olympus shirt on. I'm not sponsored by them, you know. Wish I was Olympus if you're watching this at any point, thank you very much. So yes, today we are going to be talking about this. This is the Olympus 100 to 400 millimeter lens. Um, I've had it for about two weeks or so now from when it came out and this is the first um, and Sunday was the first opportunity I had to use it as it as it was intended to when I brought it and that was motorsport photography at Donington Park which you saw earlier and I'll show you some photos from that later. Before we get into the video properly I just wanted to let you know about today's sponsor. They're not paying, I run it so you know I'm not paying myself, I wish I was. Uh, so yes it is the As Yet Unnamed podcast. Basically it's a weekly show with myself, Damien Lee, Darren Antrobus. It's a 60 minute-ish fun hour of discussion, news, top fives, quizzes. It's just a really fun podcast from three uh, good friends ish um, and it is out every Monday. All the links are down below. So this video is sponsored by the as yet unnamed podcast every Monday 6am on your favourite podcast app. Right let's get on with the review. I know that's what you're waiting for. So this is the lens. It is a beast of a micro four thirds lens. Um, it's a it's a hefty old bit of glass and metal and it's really really nicely constructed. Um, metal body um, metal mounts obviously is weather sealed as well um, so when you combine it with the EM1 and the EM5s um, I don't think the EM10s are weather sealed, the new one maybe but it is um, weather sealed so it does work perfectly with those so let's go over the lens specifications it is a 100 to 400 millimeter lens which is the equivalent of 200 to 800 millimeter um, it has a close focusing point of 1.3 meters, which is really, for this type of lens, that's really close. And it is all the way through as well. So it's from 100 to 400. So you can use it really nicely with some uh, inset photography, flower photography, sort of macro, but not proper macro. So it is f5 at the widest end to f6.3 at the telephoto lens. So it is not the fastest lens in the world. It is not like some of the primes of 40 to 150 is f2.8 all the way through, and the 300 is f4, uh, I believe. Um, and the new pro lens that they're gonna be bringing out, the 150 to 400 is an f4.5. But I'll come on to why that might not be the best option for everybody later on in the video. So let's have a closer look through the lens. On the button side, you have the focus limiter, so you can go from 1.3 to six meters if you're doing close up, 1.3 to infinity, and then if you're doing further away stuff, six meters to infinity. Um, that just helps the lens control its focus distance, so it's not hunting back and forth throughout the whole range every time you're focusing on something. Uh, you've got your autofocus manual focus, very useful. It doesn't have the clutch that the pro lenses have at the front of the lens, so you've just got a button on there, it's fine, you can easily find it. Um, and then you have your IS, which is either on or off. The only other button on here, you do have the lock button, and that just stops when you're holding it over your shoulder or you, you're transporting the lens, just stops it from creeping. I've had no issues with creeping, um, that's with it off. As lenses get used and they get older, you may suddenly start to notice that as you walk in, it just does that. That's what that button's for, very simple. 
Uh, lens front, it is a 77 millimeter thread, which is fine. Uh, most of their pro lenses, the 40 to 150 definitely is a 72, so you can use your filters if you've got them on there. Um, I tend not to use filters on the front of my lenses um, unless it's an ND filter. I doubt very much I'll be uh, using an ND filter on this. So the weight of the lens is 1,120 grams, so 1.1 kilos, um, which is a, it's a big lens um, and you combine it with the EM1, particularly with the battery grip on there, which is always on there for me. Um, and yes, you've got a, a fairly weighty bit of equipment, but you compare this to a full frame lens of this equivalent focal length and you're talking a lot bigger lens, a lot more expensive. That's the advantage of Micro Four Thirds. Um, it is 205.7 millimeters from end to end, not including the lens cap, which does come with it, uh, which does just click on. It's not one of the ones that's combined with the lens like the 40 to 150. However, I have seen a lot of people say that that particular lens hood just goes when it wants at some point. So I'm not bothered, the lens hood stays on. It does twist on when you're transporting it as well, as normal, works perfectly fine. So at the front of the lens, we have the focus, which you can do, it's nice and smooth. It doesn't click, so it does just keep on spinning either way, if that's something that you're interested in knowing. And then the other zoom, uh, the other ring on here is for the zoom itself. So that is at 100 millimeters, and then that's at 400 millimeters. So that is the full length of the lens when it's fully extended. Um, as with most lenses of this type, the 100, 150, 200 to 300, you've got quite a wide, and then when you jump to 400, it's that tiny little bit on there um, at the end. So, so the image stabilization on the lens isn't the IS, uh, the Sync IS, so it doesn't communicate with the camera bodies um, as the pro lenses do. So it gives you up to three stops effective um, on the lens stabilization, but you can use it when you have the image stabilization, in-body image stabilization turned on. I've had both on, so the whole time I've used this lens and I've never had any issues um, with jerkiness and missing the stabilization and all that sort of stuff. I know some people have noticed it. I've had no issues whatsoever with the image stabilization on the lens and the camera combining. They just work together, which is really good. It does come with a tripod mount, um, so you can just attach this to the tripod without putting something else. There is a screw on there if you want to, um, but it does come with a tripod mount and this is movable. So if you've got the camera on the tripod, uh, you can unlock and then you can then twist the lens there as well. So you can twist it round when it's actually still on your tripod, so you don't have to take it off and move the tripod around as well, which is really useful on this. So this is the lens on the EM1 Mark II with the battery grip. The battery grip stays on all of the time. I just find it extremely useful um, when you're doing portraits or landscapes. I just like the feel of this. Um, and then when I looked at the EM1X, um, basically it is that shape. So if I ever upgrade, obviously it'll just feel the same. Um, so yes, it is weighty. Um, the balance with the grip on, so, ooh, that's scary. I'm currently not uh, supporting that. So that's it balanced. Um, it does balance really well. If you're gonna be using this on the EM10s, I probably wouldn't recommend it as much for that. Uh, EM5s, it should work fine. You will probably need a grip um, just because obviously it's a lot of weight at the front. So just to be comfortable, you may need to add the grip to the EM5, um, but it will work absolutely fine. Uh, the lens is compatible with the 1.4 and the two times teleconverters that Olympus do. Um, obviously, f-stops will dramatically increase. Um, so with the 1.4, I believe it's f9 is the minimum aperture. And then with the two times, it's f11, which means you've got a very slow lens. However, if you're shooting daytime wildlife, which is a lot of what this or motorsport, then the two times will work completely fine. Um, I have noticed some slight softness in the images, but you get that on the 40 to 150. You put the two times teleconverter on there, you're gonna lose some quality, um, but it works fine. And with the 1.4, it's absolutely fine. I can see no distinguishable difference in quality of the images between using just this and then having this and the 1.4 converter on there. Um, shoot for the conditions. If it's an early morning and you haven't got much light, don't put the 1.4, the two times teleconverter on there. It's an option for you to increase the focal length. 
You get the two times on here, you get a 1600 millimeter equivalent full frame length handheld with image stabilization. 1600 millimeters. That is pretty darn impressive. Um, but if you're shooting in the morning, don't put it on because F11 is going to be too slow. So shoot for the conditions and the equipment you have, um, not complain about the fact that, oh, it's really slow F-stops when you put on the converters. If you don't like it, don't put them on. And if you don't like the lens, don't buy it. Simple, really. Right, let's have a look at some of the pictures I've taken uh, and also some of the video using this lens. So the images are a mix of wildlife as I was walking around and then on Sunday I went to Donington Park to film some uh, to photograph motorbikes and uh, I used this lens throughout. It didn't come off the camera at any point. Um, so let's have a look at the results. So let's go through some images shot using the 100 to 400 millimeter lens, trying to give you a different example of some of the different things you can use them on. Um, so we will start with this. This is a cow that was in a field close to me. Um, it is a uh, shot at 400 mil at 1 400th at f6.3 ISO 200. Um, and as I uh, said previously in the video, you can get some nice blurry backgrounds and nice separation from your subject to the background. Um, at f6.3, that's perfectly fine for me. The sharpness is really nice. Um, you can see all of the fine detail in the hair. Um, so I've got no issue shooting this wide open at 400 mil. By wide open, I mean f6.3. And again, this was um, one of our chickens. Um, it had been raining, hence the mud all over its beak. Um, and uh, yeah, so again, really, really nice detail all across the hairs there. Um, I have edited this slightly um, just to sort of bring out some of the detail, but it was all there originally. Um, but really nice and sharp. Um, really, really good detail representation and really good colours as well. Um, the sun just shining through its crown there. Um, again, really, really nice. Uh, this was again 400 mil. This was at 1.3 meters, which is its closest focusing distance. Um, I didn't quite nail the eye on my focus, so it's just off the side there. But as you can see, you just get look. You can see every single individual fine hair all around its eye. Um, and all over here as well. When you think you're shooting at 800 millimeter equivalent, that is a pretty impressive amount of detail coming out of the lens. This is an example using the um, two times teleconverter, so 800 mil handheld F13 ISO 500. Um, and this was a crane which was probably about 150 meters away from where I was on the other side of this uh, reservoir. And again, Perfectly acceptable images. I really like this image, actually. Um, but again, really nice color representation. Yes, you are a little soft on there, um, but to be expected when you're using a two times teleconverter and also don't pixel peep. Simple. That image looks perfectly fine. You go down into the granular and you're like, oh, that's slightly out that. Just don't. It's not worth it. Um, Again, I really like this image. 400 mil looks like the um, this duck um, is basically in the clouds. It wasn't it was on the water. Just worked really well. Um, and again, really nice fine detail all around the feathers, all around the duck. Fast moving subject. So yeah, really good. This just shows what you can do with the semi macro style. So this was at 400 mil ISO 250. So this next image is shot at 800 mil with a two times teleconverter. Um, ISO 13, uh, 3200 at F13. Yes, it's not in focus and yes, I could have done better, but that is Jupiter and its four moons. On a lens, on a, you know, it's very impressive. Um, and then this is the moon. Um, again, this isn't quite as good as I was hoping it would be, I'll be honest. And I think that is probably due to the teleconverter. I think it might be better to use the 1.4 and crop rather than the two uh, when you shoot in the moon because um, it isn't quite in focus. It could well have been me. It was a very quick handheld shot. But again, handheld 800 mil. That's not bad going, really, is it? Um, and then... This is the reason I brought this lens was for my motorcycle, uh, for my motorsport photography. Um, so this was shot at 210 mil ISO 200 f7.1 1 200th 50th of a second, which is about 
where I go to about one two hundredth. Um, if I'm wanting some some good panning with the Olympus, I tend not to go much slower than that. Um, but you get a nice panning effect, um, and the bike here is uh, really nice in focus. Uh, and yeah, it just works really well. I'm saying that a lot, I know. But again, when you nail it, 400 mil, ISO 200, F 6.3, 1 200th of a 50th, that is pin sharp throughout the whole of that rider. Um, the background is blurred as I wanted it for the panning shot, um, but that's at 400 mil, wide open, and it is absolutely tack sharp throughout the whole of what I wanted it to be. I am so pleased with that image. It's one of my favorite images of the day. Um, this is shooting in portrait, which you don't tend to do a lot with motorsport, but I quite like the effect it has. Again, at 400 mil, um, and you can see the driver's face, uh, the driver's, shouldn't say that for motorcyclists, the rider's face. Um, and again, the bike is pin sharp throughout. Um, panning shot, 250th of a second, I like this image. It didn't quite work as planned. I was set for some panning shots and then this rider came off and, you know, split second. I just literally followed the rider. This is one 125th second at F10 ISO 200, 169 mil. Um, the rider came off, so I now have a panning rider shot, but I actually quite like the way it did. Uh, it's not quite in focus. It was literally, I was pointing that way. I heard the scrape, swung the camera around. Um, and focused on him as he came off his bike. He was fine. He was absolutely fine. He got up and walked away and has asked if he can have the photos. This one, so this is uh, at one 1,600th one of a second, F5.6, ISO 1000. Um, this rider destroyed his bike. Um, he was fine. He walked away. Some bumps and bruises, as you would expect, at Craner Curves, another member of the Craner Curve family, uh, Craner Curve Club, I think it's called, in the bike world. Um, his bike... Not so much, but he really likes these photos, which is a plus for me. Um, so, yeah, he came off and I was on um, high shutter speed and it was literally I followed him. Click, click, click. I think I got about 20 photos of this uh, at different points. The tracking when you use the lens um, is fine. It's slightly off compared to the 40 to 150, but the actual focus tracking um, and the tracking of the subject is as good as my camera really does. Um, the EM3 and the uh, EM1X um, all are better at tracking, but the EM2 is is fine. Um, it loses it sometimes, but it works. When you get it in, it's nice and sharp, and I really like this image. Really, really good. Again, 400 mil ISO 200 f8, um, and you can see really nice and clear and sharp images. And again, this is one. I like that image. It's not completely nailed. That one is nailed, as you can tell. The bike is just pin sharp. The rider is pin sharp. Um, and again, it just works really well. And I'm probably about, I don't know, 40 metres away from on the side of the track. Probably a bit less, but quite a distance. And again, they just work really nicely. So this next image was shot through the fence. Um, I'm not one of those photographers who can get the other side of the fence, so you have to make do with what you've got. You can tell it's slightly hazy it focuses well through the fence um i did notice a couple of times with the 1.4 on it would suddenly snap back to the fence itself and you would lose the focus and then you'd have to almost manually focus in there so that's one thing to uh, take note of um but yeah again it's it's not that's not the sharpest image um so that was at 560 mil but i am shooting through the fence so take with that what you will uh, this again, really nice sharp image. I love this one. This look at that. That helmet there is just brilliant. The Iron Man, really, really good. Um, this was shot through the fence with the 1.4 converter on there. So 560 mil F10 ISO 1600, and you are fairly sharp. Um, it's a little noisy, but you get that with micro four thirds. But again, don't pixel peep. Uh, oops, sorry. There we go. And again, same settings, uh, pretty much ISO 200, F9, this one. But really nice sharp image on this one, actually. And you can see all the heat haze. The, the rendition of the colours and the detail is really good on this lens. Um, and then this final one, it's not quite tack sharp. 
it's a little bit off it's a little bit fuzzy but i just like the image um and i like the speed and this was shot at 1 250th iso 400 and again really nice so next up, we're going to have a look at some video that was recorded um, with the EM1 Mark II at 4K using the 100 to 400 mil lens. This is at 400 mil. Um, I'm just going to let this play. And this is the bikes coming over. Um, and as you can see again, for video, it is really, really good. Um, it gives a nice and stable image um, when I'm not moving the camera, obviously. Um, and you probably would need a tripod. I think this was probably handheld. It would have been handheld because I didn't have my tripod with me. Um, but as you can see, the focus is losing it at some point. That's probably more the camera than the actual lens itself. Um, but when it is in focus, it is really nice and sharp. So I'll just show you another freeze frame. Um, this again, same settings and everything. Um, and as you can tell, really, really nice crisp images. You get really nice video out of this. I'll link all the videos for this and also the moon video I showed in the first impressions video uh, in the description down below if you want to have a look at them. So my final thoughts on the Olympus 100 to 400 millimeter lens. Um, do you know, I have to say, I, I went from Canon, uh, I was a Canon shooter, and then I moved to the Micro Four Thirds systems. Um, and the first Micro Four Thirds camera I got was the EM10 Mark II with the two kit lenses. I think it was the 14 to 40 and then the 40 to 150 lens. Um, and I have to be honest, I was not impressed with those lenses at all. Um, coming from a lot of the Canon kit that I got, it was sort of quite big lenses and all that sort of stuff um, and I came to those and they were plastic and yeah, I didn't like them but as soon as you get pro lenses um, Olympus do some absolutely fantastic lenses they are sharp throughout um, as you saw in the photos um, and they're just so well built so well built sturdy they feel nice they look nice I, look at that isn't that a nice looking lens um, and camera combination doesn't that look good um, and they're just really well built lenses and, and really, really quality. The 40 to 150 Pro lens is my favorite lens of all time throughout all of the lenses I've ever owned. I love that lens. It is absolutely stunning. This is a very close second to that lens. Um, image quality is absolutely fine. For me, it's perfect all the way throughout from 100 to 400. Stick on the converters, as I said earlier, you're gonna lose some quality, that's fair enough. Would I have liked a faster lens? Yes, but, Faster lenses cost a lot more money. The 40 to one, the 150 to 400 mil lens, which is coming out sometime this year, apparently, um, is probably likely to cost, I don't know, the price hasn't been released, but I'm gonna guess at two and a half to three thousand, three and a half thousand pound. Uh, yes, it does have a built-in 1.4 converter. I am sure it's gonna be an absolutely stunning lens, but it's out of my price range. I am not a professional. That is aimed at professional sports photographers, wildlife photographers. That's what that lens is aimed at. Um, I am a semi-keen professional amateur. What you call, I've sold photos. I've done some paid work. It's not my daily job. Um, so this sort of lens is, is perfect for me when I'm at the motorsport track, when I'm shooting wildlife. That reach of 200 to, four, 200 to 800 mil equivalent just works at 400 mil you can get fairly decent out of focus if that's what you want um, but for me this lens is probably almost a perfect lens so when this lens was first announced there was so much negativity about it um, it's unbelievable well, it's not unbelievable it's the internet um, it came just as olympus were announcing or just after they announced that they were selling themselves being brought out by another company everybody was saying it's the death of olympus death of micro four thirds i truly don't think it is i think a company that's going to pay hundreds of millions of dollars a hell of a lot of money for a company isn't going to run it into the ground so i have confidence that olympus cameras are here to stay and the micro four thirds are here to stay perhaps in a different guise who knows we will find out but I think this camera has got a lot, a lot of life left in it, as well as the system. Um, point number one. Point number two people are making is, and they always make it about Micro Four Thirds, it's too big. That's not what the system is about. Perhaps when Micro Four Thirds first started, it was all about the lightweight, compact use, small lenses, compact bodies. It's evolved. Um, 
it's evolved to the point now where professionals use this system because they have the smaller bodies and then a full frame camera. Um, the lenses are smaller than comparable full frame on most of the time. Um, so if you're one of those people that moans all the time and complains about the fact that it's too big, it's too heavy, it's too bulky, don't buy it. Simple as. If you want an alternative, the 75 to 300 mil lens that Olympus do, it's a perfectly adequate lens for a lot of people. It just doesn't fit what I need. I don't like the lens. I don't like the plastic feel of it. It's not weather sealed. The image quality is not very good for me. Um, so if you don't like a big lens like this, go and buy that. It's cheap. Um, it works for a lot of people. If you want a travel lens, all that sort of stuff, it's fine. If you're a professional um, and you want a brighter lens, then wait for the pro lens that's coming out later this year and be prepared to pay for it. It's not going to be a cheap lens, as I said. It's going to be a very expensive lens. It's going to be a very good lens, and it's probably one that I will look at and go, I wish I could get that. But if you're pro, go for that. If you're not a pro, you're a keen amateur, you're a semi-pro, you do a little bit of sports photography, wildlife photography, you always want that extra bit of reach when you're photographing wildlife in particular, or you're at a racetrack and you're behind a fence, all that sort of stuff then why not look at this lens? It's just over a thousand pound in the UK. I think it's about the same, I think it's about $1,400 in America. Um, it's just a really nice lens. It's probably one of the, the best lenses I've had. Um, so if you're in the market for a good telephoto that isn't the Panasonic 100 to 400, which I hate, um, then go for this. As simple as that, really. I've no regrets. It's a brilliant lens, really nice results, and I'm very, very happy with it. So that's it for the video for today. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, click on the like button and subscribe as well. And why not leave a comment? Let me know what you think of the lens of the Micro Four Third system as a whole um, and what your experience of Olympus and Panasonic cameras are. I'd love to know. Lots of videos coming up over the next couple of weeks. I film them as and when I can. Uh, don't forget we've got the podcast out every Monday morning from 6am. All of the details for that are down below. And until the next video, thank you so much for watching. I have been Ian HRP and bye for now.